Hello there, gentlemen, and welcome to the Nation States of Voodoo Dare. The United Kingdom of Cape Breton is here, the corporate police states that we are. We've been updating the fact books here. The, uh, the royal family of Cape Breton has now been listed. We have King William Breton, the 23-year-old king, unmarried. We have Prince Winston Breton, the uh, heir to the throne. He is 17, and he is the head of the National Air Force. We have Princess Elizabeth Breton. She is 16, and she is the CEO of the Royal Arms Manufactories. We also have King Wallace Jigelian Breton of Hambeck. Aged 9, he is the youngest brother, and he is now disinherited as he married the Queen of Hambeck, which is why he is also a king. Duke Commander Herbert Breton of Maine. He is 10 years old, unmarried, and the commander of the New England military force. He is a cousin, and we start them young. And then, of course, we have the youngest of the group, Count, Hen uh, Count Harry Breton of Newfoundland. He is 2 years old, unmarried, and the head admiral to the Navy. You might wonder why. Well, it's because we start our training young. But enough of that. Let's get down to the issues here. Dead in the water, they say. Massive fertilizer-fueled algae blooms in the south illegal border across a sea. <laughs> the south illegal border across a sea. Anyway, they are quickly depleting aquatic oxygen levels and suffocating marine life. Yes, that's exactly what the illegal border crossers do. They deplete resources and suffocate everyone already there. This is... Ah, this is too good. Vaguely aware of this fact, you are on a poorly planned fishing trip in the south illegal border across the sea, arranged by the Ministry of Agriculture. The fishing expedition is intended to impress foreign dignitaries, but you can't help but notice that there are more strategic locales for a PR stunt. Areas that aren't a sticky brown colour. All the same, you cast a line into the water and a few seconds later the fishing rod bends and flexes wildly. That must be a big piece of garbage. There's no way you'll catch any fish in that dead water, concludes Chasty Oliver, an unbashed nihilist and CEO of Drill Baby Drill. She jabs a finger at the open sea, adding, This proves that it's high time to give up on envir environmental regulation altogether. If you want to squeeze some more production from this pool of filth, abolish those obsolete pollution laws hindering my offshore oil rigs. There's nothing left to protect after all. Ah, I mean, we could create a lot more money, but the environment would go to shit. But do we really care about the environment? We could just have every other nation in the world sign up to an environmental health committee, and they can all do our work for us. There's many ways around this. A hard pull on the line drags the rod out of your hands. Rory Van Dyke, a retired senior captain from Something Fishy, makes a diving catch for it and wrestles with whatever is on the other end. He exclaims, if that's a fish, we must find out how it miraculously lives in lifeless water. He continues to struggle with the fishing rod, but if it's the only trash out there, then the only way to save the fishing industry and the environment is to strictly limit the fertilizers caused in the dead zone in the first place. I do support the limitation of fertilizers because it does kill the land and it does ruin the vegetables and fruits, whatever you grow there, over multi-generations. And I mean multi-plant generations, not human generations. It, it really does. Fertilizers really do fuck everything up. They suck the life out of the land. I mean, the vegetables suck the life out of land, and the fertilizers is is not what you want there. You want to uh, you want to have crops die on the land and get the earth nutrient filled and such. You don't want to just put fertilizer down all that shit. With a wrench and some salty language, the captain lands the fish. A woman in a scuba suit. Floundering on deck, she fumes, Ah, I can't see anything down there. All that gunk from the estuary. Rumour has it there's shipwrecks down there, but I've never seen one. Look, the problem here is chemical fertiliser runs, runs off from farms. So why not fix the problem back at the farms with better chemicals? Oblige the farmers to add chlorine bleach to the water supply in proportion to the fertilisers they use. And your rivers and seas will be crystal clear water. No, what we're going to do is we're going to strictly limit the fertilizer use. Debate rages over whether ground fish guts can be spread on fields. Well, you should. I, f I don't know about ground fish guts. 
But what I use is um, I use algae from the sea. And that's really helped my crops this year. A lot of algae and uh, dead leaves, stuff like that. Whenever I eat an apple or a bit of fruit, I just I throw it onto my uh, my growing lot, and it just absorbs into the land and makes it much better. So I think I think that is the way. Oh, what is this? Industrial base, eh? I don't like when taxation goes up, but I do like when this goes up. Lifespan also. Eco-friendliness has gone up 100%. Uh, trout fishing has gone up 200%. Well, that's very good. What went down, though? Employment, gambling, obesity. Oh, obesity going down is good. Crime. Oh, very good. This was a terrific decision. Hey, what is next on the list? Public loudspeakers shrill with controversy. What is this? Islam fucking mosques with their loudspeakers chanting out every several hours. I do not miss Luton in England. A recent poll on putting up huge loudspeakers in Cape Breton cities for public governmental broadcasts has been brought to your attention. Oh, really? So it's nothing to do with the mosques. Well, I guess mosques are banned in my nation. This idea is brilliant, and Cape Breton can't afford to pass it up, claims Maria Duran, your Minister of Safety. These loudspeakers can assure the public that the government is always here to help them. The potential here to immediately warn citizens of an emergency, such as an earthquake or a stampede of illegal border crossers, or something, just must be taken into account. This must, this could save lives. And I suppose when there isn't anything the citizens need to be told, you could always use and broadcast patriotic messages, like, We rule the straits and inform the good people which party to join and vote for with news briefs and such. It'll be worth to strengthen the populace's devotion to our glorious nation. Immediately warn citizens of an emergency such as an earthquake or a stampede of illegal border crosses. That is just brilliant. Time to take a screenshot of that. There we go. I think people need to realise what this is really is. Brainwashing. Resorts. Uh, retorts. Sherlock Rasputin. A wealthy marketer. I don't want to hear all this flag-waving hogwash every time I go out for a walk. But when it comes to emergencies, I do agree that something should be done to warn everyone. We should send out messages on mandatory miniature radios that you can carry in your pockets. I could tell you things you need to know, too. Like what shoes to buy and such. Well, let's ignore this fellow. To be honest, I can't see why we should put up with advertising at all, says Anakin Wolf, an anti-business protester. All it is is some multi-billionaire politician somewhere trying to make even more money with while the rest of us struggle to make ends meet. I say we ban advertising, and actually I say we ban the whole capitalism thing altogether. Maybe the economy will suffer a little, but that's just a minor side effect. Really, especially when you consider that no longer will our children be encouraged to fill themselves with junk food because some guy on the telly tells them it's cool. This guy is a communist and he'll be executed at once. Um, we could go with um, propaganda. We can go... Let's go with propaganda. Public loudspeakers constantly tell since they are happy people. Of course. Foreigners confused by Cape Bretonian customs. Well... How about that? Corruption has gone up. Economic output. Taxation again. Would you fuck off? What's gone down? No employment. How does propaganda low employment? Oh, obesity. Very good. Very happy with that. Public freedom. Um, political freedom, I should say. Oh, well. Robots in disguise. Twitch uh, recently purged millions of so-called bots. Oh, you mean... Uh, supporters of a uh, political party I don't like. Programs masquerading as real people. Yes, yes, of course, that's what it is. It's not that everyone dislikes you, it's that they're all programs. While many welcome the move, there are many politicians and right-wing Twitcher personalities who are claiming that the purge violates the freedom of speech. Yeah, no. What about my freedom of speech? demands perpetually angry conservative Twitcher personality Tammy Logan while blocking her critics on her phone. <laughs> this is obviously a plot by the liberal media and Twitcher to silence people like me for speaking the truth. The bots must be restored and be protected from further interference. There's nothing wrong with using these bots to spread your message and Twitcher must acknowledge that right. 
I'm just going to move on. Twitch has a right to set whatever rules it wants to on its website. States, to finicho sipping liberal Cho Garak. I'm sure Cho Garak would disagree if it if the roles were reversed here and they were blocking his political parties. These bots exist solely to spread misinformation and stoke divisions among Bretonishes. What? Look what happened in the United Federation when bots spread fake news to help get that despot elected. I don't want to see that happening here. Bots and other such software must be banned. Oh, and the bots aren't actual people, so it's not like anyone's free speech is really being infringed. Well, this is outright nonsense. You know, you know that these are not actually bots. These people are trying to spread misinformation to me, their glorious leader. So we must... We must, uh, we must see through the lies of, of the, the, uh, the frup fuckachino sipping liberal. Perhaps a compromise suggests your minister of moderation, who is currently atten attempting to end the flame war on Twitcher. Bots should be allowed on social media, but must clearly declare that they are bots. We have to make sure software cannot pretend to be alive. Bots can be a useful tool. But only if they kept within strict guidelines. I like this. If bots were, if you knew what was definitely a bot, instead of having to listen to the lies of the fake news media, then you could just ignore them. But at the moment, you just have so many people accusing everyone else of being a bot, and it's ridiculous. Actually, this just proves that the whole social media thing is entirely toxic. It is entirely toxic, I completely agree. Sighs uh, Hercules McKinnon. Armchair critic of the political divisions affecting Cape Breton. I can't tell you how many death threats I've gotten just because I criticise certain people on Twitter. Look, we just need to discourage the niche national addiction to social media. Yes, 100%. By subsidising websites to promote other healthy aspects of the internet. Stuff like academic research, online games, pornography and entertainment sites. This entirely. The people, especially my generation, are so addicted this social media it is absurd and now it's growing to the older generations who are getting sucked in by this fake news media and being brainwashed by all kinds of utter nonsense you must regulate it at once ah what's going on here economic output nudity has gone up oh very good civil rights lifespan weaponization is down crime is down very good Economic freedom is down. Well, fuck you. Well, let's go ahead and check our last issue here. A political cock-up. A low-budget film allegedly showing junior government minister Brian von Bismarck in a compromising, though technically legal, position has gone viral on social media. Concerned individuals, especially parents, are loudly voicing their opinions on the matter. Very good. Touching that and then shaking hands with you, grass gasps local parent and Averred shoplifter Heavy Heather Cox. <laughs> Heavy Cox. <laughs> While discreetly watching the infamous video on her phone. We can't have people like this on television addressing the public. Or anywhere else in government for that matter. Besides, you deserve better than to have your good office being sullied by such an immoral individual. I'll, if you don't like them, elect them out. Wait, no, we're a monarchy. I appoint whoever the fuck I want. Well, fuck you. I'll do what I want. Booting him out of the job won't do any good for our country. If anything, they'll just go down as a martyr to their fellow deviants, rants affluential religious talk show host Magnus Kiefbar. I have subjected myself to constant, repeated study of the sinful actions of this filthy reparate, and as far as I'm concerned, the only way to teach degenerates like this a lesson is through proper punishment. A thrashing, maybe, or a good old-fashioned stoning in a town square. Well, this is clearly an Islamic terror in Stigato, and he must be banished from my nation at once. Don't you think this is taking things a bit far? Queries the minister in question, nervously. It's a low-quality video, and that could be anyone's. Okay, it was me. But I don't do it anymore. Okay, I still do it. But it's biologically a uh, biology that made me this way. Can you blame biology? Leader, you can't deny that I satisfy you with the job I do. <laughs> so why would it matter how I spend my leisure time? Well, exactly, it shouldn't matter how he spends his leisure time at all. Politicians bearing all for the camera isn't always a figure of speech. 
Cape Bridge was reclassified from a corporate police state to a compulsory consumer state. Good, I preferred being that. Voters alert. Cape Breton more chill than ever before. Naked people protesting something again. Have a gambling problem. Odds are you don't. This is great. Nudity is up. Terrific. Weaponization, economic outputs. Taxation is down, but not enough. Authoritarianism is down. Good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how things have gone. The nation is doing very well. Let's just check the laws here. Yeah, not much has changed here. The government spending is down to 46.2% on military. All this nonsense here. But let's have a look at uh, Vujo Dea. What's, what's going on today? Ah, the most corrupt government. Well, as you can see, I'm not the highest. Not at all. Let's see who the least corrupt is. The Kino de Naria. Ah, well, good for you. Let's see what... Who has... Who... Who has the best? Who has the best? Um, weather. People's Republic of Lesser Mania. Oh, I'm 16th out of... I think 20 odd. That's no good. Who is the uh, who has the highest? Who has the most uh, cheerfulness? Ah, uh, the matriarchy of the new Amazon. Well, look at you and your tiny nation of sixteen million. Ah, uh, the airship business has been driven out of the country. Ah, oh, well, sucks to be them. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'm not sure what will be going on then, but... Way! 0% divorce rate is fucking funny. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.